to the Lord. Keep your mind open to the Lord. Even when you're listening to things that uh, you're not accustomed to, even when you're listening to uh, things and individuals that don't uh, agree with what you believe, you know, All keep right. your mind open because we're always in a stage of examination. You know, the Bible says, you know, that there are, uh, uh, there are um, individuals who profess to be of God, but they're not of God. And that's not a judgmental uh, statement. It's not a judgmental statement. You know, Brother Fred, you can't determine, you know, who's of God and who's not of God. Uh, that's not a judgmental statement. That, that is a statement for us in regards to keeping our minds open. Because we're constantly comparing what individuals saying and what they're doing to what we know the word of God says. Yes, sir. You know, so how do I know if a person is uh, telling the truth or not? How do I know if a person is living for the Lord or not? How do I know if a person is speaking God's will or not? Well, what I understand from God's word. And that's why we ought to study, study the Bible. You know, you, you, you're not going to feel your way. I'm not going to feel my way to heaven. Well, Lord, I just felt like it was right, so I just got, I just did it. No, you're not going to feel your way. You're not going to be judged by your feelings. The books are going to be open. Another book is going to be open, which is the book of life. Right. And we're going to be judged out of the things that are written in the books. You're not going to be judged by our feelings. Right. Lord's not going to judge you, and he's not going to say, well done, good and faithful servant, because you felt good. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't feel good. But don't use your feelings as a means of determining whether you're doing what God wants you to do right. or not. Yes, sir. You got to open your mind, listen to what individuals are saying to you, and then, and then look at what they're saying in reference to what the word of God says. The Bible says that God be true and every man a liar, Romans chapter 3 and verse number 3. You know, what if some don't believe? Does that make the, the, the word of God, the commandments of God of none effect? He says, no, let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. So if you haven't been involved in Bible class, if, if you, even if you know, and, and it's so, it, listen, it is so easy now to be a part of Bible class because, hey, you know, I love to hear what you have to say, but you can be a part of Bible class. You don't even have to say anything. You can. I, I was. Uh, I was looking at uh, uh, this. Uh, this. Uh, this uh, uh, gentleman. I was in the store. You know, you go in the store and you, you know get some gas. And so I was in the store yesterday getting some gas, and uh, and so this this guy was uh, standing. Then had his earbuds in. You know, and I, I knew he was on the phone because uh, I was I was standing behind him. I wasn't easy. You know, you just standing behind. You could see. You know, I, <laughs> he had, <laughs> and he was FaceTiming someone, and then and uh, you could and I, I looked at the phone. You know, and then I looked away. You know, but you know, you I couldn't observe him what's around me. So um, uh, and so he's talking to this person on the phone, and uh, he's got his earbuds in. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I hear what he's saying. I can't hear what the other person is saying. But he's carrying on a conversation. He's in front of me. He goes up to cash, still on the phone. He's, he, he's taking care of his transaction. He swiped his card, put his pen number in, still on the phone. Got through his transaction, walked right out of the door, on the phone. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? What, why would you miss Bible class? You can be on the phone in the store. You can take care of a transaction on the phone in the store. Why you can't be on? Why you can't be on Bible class? Why you can't tune in to Bible class? Just listen, listen. Why, why should I listen, Brother Fred? Because I'm constantly seeing things every day. I'm constantly making decisions regarding how I'm going to live for God every day. And I need to have my mind filled with the word of God so that I can have something to make a sound decision on. Are y'all with me? Man, if you don't know what's going on around you, you don't know how to react. I was driving in yesterday in this black SUV, black 
black wheels, black body, black grill in the front. And then it had a black light, a black light above the mirror. All right. <laughs> Are y'all with me? So now if I don't, if I'm not thinking, I'm going to be rolling, and that might be an officer of the law. All right. Are y'all with me? Yes, I don't know, I don't know, brothers, if you've, you know, looked at your brother James, probably to do it, you know, because he's a professional driver, but you can look in a split second, you're scanning that vehicle. The wheels, the body, the mirrors, uh, man, you're looking at a split second, you're scanning. And if you don't know something, then you might get a ticket. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. I saw that light on that, uh, above that mirror. All right. I looked at my speed, check my speed, make sure I'm doing it. And he went on by. All right. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. You've got to be aware of what's going on around you. Maybe. And you've got to have something in your mind. And that's why I'm saying, come to Bible study. There's no excuse for us to miss Bible study. Even if you're working, you can put your earbuds. Well, I'm not, I'm not, let, me, let me get off of that. Uh, I don't know what you can do at work. But, but if you're at home, there's no need in you missing Bible study. It's imperative that you uh, uh, have uh, Bible study. Bible study. So, so we want to live in excellence. I text, uh, so good to see everybody this morning. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Brother Ron, for uh, opening us up, leading us in prayer uh, this morning, and leading us in song to praise to God. Thank you, uh, brothers and sisters, for lifting up your voices in song to praise uh, to God. Song to God is worthy of our praise, leaning on the everlasting on. Leaning on Jesus. And you sing it. Sing it. Who else can you lean on than Jesus? I love to pray. He's my rock. My rock, my sword, and shield. Thank you for lifting up your voices and praise to God. Brother Matthew, thank you so much for leading us in the collection and the communion. Brother Jason, thank you for the reading of the word. Brother Lane, thank you so much for leading us in prayer. To those of you who are visiting with us, uh, we are, we are so glad that you're here, and we pray that this won't be your last time uh, being present with us, and we pray that your being here today will be a blessing to your life and a glory to God. We're going to study from Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read verses 5 and 6, and then, and then we'll share the um, subject for uh, today. The Bible says, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number five, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The subject under which we will study on today is entitled Faith that pleases God. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5 through 6, all of the word of God gives us keys, key thoughts. But today we're going to apply our attention. We're going to focus on Hebrews chapter 11 and verse five and six, to gain some key thoughts regarding living new self excellence. We recited the entire core value that we read on uh, during our Bible class. And I 
did that because the whole core value is what we want to grasp. The excellence and victory I receive from my faith when I see the invisible, say the impossible, so the incorruptible, believe the unbelievable, and I expect a miracle through the power of the Holy Spirit. So in, in Bible class last week, we talked about how that sometimes when we hear these words invisible and impossible and incorruptible and unbelievable and expect a miracle, they sometimes go in one ear and out the other. But now we don't want that to happen in our lives because if we do, we're going to miss what the Lord says he will do. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. If you have a nice car and I ask you for a ride, you say, come on. And then I ask you after you say, come on and ride with me, I ask you, do you know how to drive? Uh, and then I said, well, do you have any insurance? Uh, and then I ask you, uh, uh, how long have you been driving? I go through all of that interrogation. By the time I get through asking you all of these questions, uh, you don't even want to give me a ride. Are y'all with me? And sometimes we do God the same way. We say, Lord, can I be your child? Lord, can I follow you? Lord, I want to follow you. And then he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are of a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we come, we get baptized, and then after we get baptized, well, Lord, is that really going to happen? Did you really forgive me? Do I really need to come to church Sunday morning and Sunday evening? Do I really need to study the Bible every day? Are y'all with me? We come up with all of these questions to God. We want God to be for us whenever we need him. But we always have questions. Why? Because we have problems with that core value. We have problems with the invisible. We have problems with the uh, impossible and the uh, incorruptible and the unbelievable. We have problems expecting a miracle. And I don't want anybody to, to think, well, Brother Frazier then this just went off. He's talking about miracles now. I don't want you to, I don't want you to miss me now. Because, uh, because understand God can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So when you got your hand on it and you're doing, you in control of it, you know, God is good. But when you, when you don't have your hand on it and you can't put your hand on it, yeah, you'll say a miracle. You'll say a miracle. Don't act like you can't say it. When it happened, when it happened, out of your control, God worked a miracle in my life. Uh-huh. Yeah, you'll say it. Don't act like you can't say it. And don't act like it won't happen because the text already told you. He's able. Are y'all with me? He's able to work things out for our good. So, so, so study with me because God has given us keys. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 16, you remember this passage, verse number 18, uh, Jesus says, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Then he says in verse number 19, and I shall give unto thee, talking to Peter, the keys, you remember that? K-E-Y-S, keys to the kingdom. Now many of you have said or heard someone and agree with someone uh, when they said, I am looking for A. Uh, God is going to give me, uh, we need a breakthrough. I'm looking for a breakthrough. God's going to give me a breakthrough. We need a, a breakthrough. And somebody asked the question, uh, how do you get in a house quicker? 
through breaking in or with a key. You get in quicker with a key. Are y'all with me? Jesus says, and I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom. Are y'all with me? And in our evangelistic methods, we understand that God is going to give the apostle Peter the gospel through the power of the Holy Spirit. We understand that. But after we obey the gospel, he gives us more keys. See, I, baptism puts me into Christ. But once I get into Christ, I've got to stay in Christ. And Jesus gives us keys to stay in Christ. And I, I tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy. You can think you're in when you're out all the time. Are y'all with me? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not being judgmental. I just live in the same world that you live in. So Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 and 6 is going to give us keys to living new self-excellence. Now, here's one key. I, you know, I really have two. It's, just, it's really two here, but these two uh, can take us a long time. And my objective is not for it to take us a long time, but you're going to see that it, it could take us a long time. This is a very, very good, challenging Discussion, And I'm, I'm hoping and praying that you won't stop here. I, I'm hoping that I'll give you enough where you will want to look at this over and over again. So the first key that we see, and they, these keys are connected. Okay, so in, in Genesis, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, in, in Hebrews chapter 5, I mean Hebrews chapter 11, excuse me, verse number 5, the Bible says, by faith Enoch. Okay, Enoch, now we read about Enoch in Genesis chapter 6. Okay, so, so now Hebrews chapter 5 says that by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith Enoch was translated. Now we know that Enoch did not die. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 9, the text says, Enoch walked with God and was not. In other words, Enoch was walking one day and then folk didn't see him no more. He disappeared. The text says he was not. He didn't die. There was no funeral for Enoch. He was just gone. He walked with God. Now, the question is, what happens when we walk with someone? Imagine that you and a close friend are enjoying a walk. You are in close proximity. You talk, you laugh, you listen, and share your heart, your attention is focused on this person with whom you are walking to the exclusion of almost everything else. You notice that the beauty around you or you notice an occasional distraction, but only to point it out to your companion. To you, I don't know if you've got somebody close to you, but if you notice something, uh, you're going to share it with the person that you are close to. You share it together. You are in harmony, and you both enjoy the peaceful camaraderie. Walking with God is like that. When we enter into a relationship with God, through faith in his son. You remember Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 20. The Bible says, let us draw near to God with the pure heart, full assurance of faith. Full assurance of faith. I don't have any doubt in my mind that the Bible says what it says and it means what it says. 
I have no doubt in my mind that the Bible was given to us through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, God said what he said and meant what he said. God didn't get mixed up when he said, salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. God didn't get mixed up. I'm the clay. He's the potter. I have no business telling God, God, you didn't mean that. He meant exactly what he said. If he can set the sun 93 million miles away from the earth and it stays there for millions of years, I believe God can say what he said and mean what he said. If he can give us clean air to breathe with all of the smog and all of the impurities in this atmosphere, I believe God can say what he said and mean what he says. Are y'all with me? Full assurance of faith means that I am without any shadow of a doubt convinced that what God said and what I did was the will of God. We've got to ask ourselves that this morning. Are you having any questions about what you did to become a Christian? Did, did what you do to become a Christian can you find it in the word of God? Someone says, well, if somebody wants to be saved today, repeat after me. Uh, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Cleanse me of my sins right now. In Jesus' name, amen. And now you're saved. If you did that, the question is, can you find any, any person in the New Testament that did that in order to become a Christian. And if you cannot find it, then you have not come to God in full assurance of faith. Are y'all with me? You haven't done what God called you to do. I remember years ago, they're, and they're still faithful to the church, they were a member of a church that believed in speaking in tongues. And they said that um, uh, they were, they said, I, and, I, and I had studied with their preacher, and, and he taught, and they said that when you're able to speak in tongues, you are saved. And so we were in Bible study, and uh, uh, I asked the question, and it's on the gift, you know, uh, what did Jesus say? Did Jesus say, he that believeth and speaks in tongues shall be saved? And they said, no. They said, he didn't say that. Because we were, they read it. He that believeth and speaks in tongues shall be saved? No. What did it say? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, if you believed, but you believe believing that it, until I speak in tongues, I'm not saved, then you, did you believe what Jesus said? And they said, no, I didn't believe. And they immediately were baptized. Isn't that something? That's full assurance of faith. So, so, so when we enter into a relationship and uh, uh, Jesus becomes, now listen to this, he becomes our heart's greatest desire. He becomes our heart's greatest desire. Knowing him, hearing his voice, sharing our hearts with him, seeking to please him becomes our all-consuming focus. Now we're walking with him. He becomes everything to us. Meeting with him is not an activity reserved for Sunday morning. When I'm going to meet with the Lord this morning, no, no, when, when you're walking with him, you have communion with him every day. We live to fellowship with him. Live in a state 
of unbroken worship. Praising God is what we do all the time. Praise God means that I agree with God. I agree with him all the time. My life is just a big amen. Are y'all with me? So be it, Lord. That's how I live every day. I am living to offer honor and praise to God. That's walking with him. Now, Enoch walked with God, and the text says he was not. And Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5 says that before he was not, before he was translated, he had this testimony. Now, the question that comes up in our study is, well, he has the testimony from who? From who? From who? Who gives this testimony? God gives the testimony. Holy Spirit gives the testimony. What is the testimony? Enoch, please God. Enoch, please God. So, okay, so here you go. Say, uh, now, I'm going to tell y'all a little something about me. Okay, now, um, when it comes down to eating meats, there's one meat that I really, really, really do not prefer. Now, I'm not saying I won't eat it because there may come a time when that, that's all there will be to eat. And if I want to stay alive, I'm going to have to eat it. But I don't prefer to eat it. Okay? And that's liver. Okay? That's liver. And you can get you some liver and smother it down in some gravy and cook some rice and and so forth, and man, look, that liver, uh, I'll say, i said, say, well, I think I'm going to pass on that liver, okay, <laughs> all right, so, so now, say for instance, now, now that I've told y'all that, we're just going to do next week, next week, so I'm going to cook Brother Fraser some dinner, and I'm going to fix him some liver. Liver and uh, he, yeah, you're going to have it. Uh, I mean, you're going to do, you're going to smother it down. You're going to make it tender, man. You cut that liver with your front for Oh, man, you got it. Got it good. So, so you bring it to me, and, uh, and uh, it looks like steak. You know, liver looks like steak. So, Brother Fraser, I done cooked you some dinner. I look at the container. Oh, it smells good. And, and oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I get over there to the to, to, to office and I sit down at my desk. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna eat me some lunch. I got it all, put it in the microwave, got it all hot and everything. And, and <laughs> when I put that liver in my mouth, like, oh man, you know, it just, it just <laughs> jolts me. <laughs> this is not steak, this is liver. Are y'all with me? And uh, because now, now I'm telling my story. Now I'm, I'm, I'm telling my stories because I don't normally do this, okay? But because it's liver, I don't eat it. I don't eat. It. So the plate is in the big can in the kitchen. And so when Monday comes, Tuesday comes, brother, uh, Baron's cleaning up. Says wood, says Moses. They look in the can, and they remember somebody brought me some liver. That whole, whole, uh, whole plate of liver is in the can. They're going to say, Brother Fraser, do that liver away. That good food, because they like liver. I'm just, <laughs> good food, they threw it away. Okay. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, you know how you talk, you know, and so forth, and say, yeah, hey, but Brother Fraser threw that, threw that plate in the tray. And then it just circulates all over the church. Brother Fraser didn't like, 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 they didn't like the liver. He threw it away. And so whoever brought it, whoever gave me the liver, they had church next Sunday. They're a little upset. 
They're a little upset with me. And uh, you ain't have to throw my food away. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're going to come right at me now. You know, no shame. They're going to just gonna get me. Uh, but, now, but now here's the thing about that. The liver was given to me. But the liver actually pleased who? Pleased them. You gave it to me. But it actually pleased you. Are y'all with me? Enoch has the testimony from God. Who was he walking with? He was walking with God. Who was he sharing his life with? He was sharing his life with God. And God turns around and says, Enoch pleases me. Now here's the question. Is it possible that in all of our efforts to worship and to serve, the person that we're pleasing is me. So Enoch pleased God. Enoch's testimony that he pleased God came from God who is the person whom he's trying to please. You know, huh? You upset with me because I don't like what pleases you. So now you don't want to have any fellowship with me anymore because I don't like what pleases you. Are y'all with me? How many times has that happened in the church? How many times have folk walked away from the church because something in the church did not please them? But Enoch has the testimony from God that Enoch please me. Enoch please God. And that's what we ought to be seeking. So in verse number six, the Hebrew writer says, he says, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, now, wait a minute. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You mean to tell me that my faith is connected to me pleasing God? Wait a minute now. You can't tell me I don't believe in God. You can't tell me that I don't love God. But there are times, I'm just, I'm talking about me now. There are times when I'm not pleasing to God. And you know, uh, now, just, just, to give you, just to give you an example, when you go back to the Old Testament, you remember, uh, remember Samson? Uh, Samson, he, Samson was, man, you, you've got to understand, I, I think, I, I really, I can't even fathom what Samson was like. Man, you, you're talking about a man, a tower of a man to, to, to kill 1,000 men with a jawbone of a donkey. Man, you know how much swinging that is? If, 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 if Samson could wipe a joke out with one blow, that's swinging a thousand times. A thousand times. Who can do a thousand push-ups? Who can do a thousand pull-ups? Man, you've got to be some kind of man to be able to do that. But watch, it was all through God's power. That was extraordinary. That was all through God's power. And Samson took God's power and used it. 
We will take God's blessings and we will use God's blessings. You let, you let God bless you with something that you really can use to make a difference. You're going to use it. And he used it. Samson went over there and to Philistine and saw Philistine woman came back and uh, he, he told his mom and daddy, I found somebody. He told her it was a Philistine. He said, oh, no, Samson, you know, Lord, I don't want you to marry no Philistine woman. Samson said, this, this is his words. You go back and read the text. Get her for me. Now, he has used God's strength. His parents have taught him that you have this strength because you are God's chosen to deliver the children of Israel. They have taught him from the womb that God wants him to marry an Israelite. And Samson knows all of this. Would you say that Samson doesn't have any faith in God? Would you say that Samson was an atheist? Would you say that Samson didn't believe in God? Samson did believe in God. But Samson also struggled with himself. And you can see his struggle when he tells his parents, get her for me. And I guarantee you, everybody in this building that knows right from wrong have experienced the same thing. I want it for myself. And when I think about how we want things for ourselves, and then I look at Hebrews 11 and verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. That makes me want to re-examine my thought process. Makes me want to re-examine this thought process. Frazier, if you say you believing in God, do you please God? Is pleasing God your primary objective? Because you cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, experience the excellence. I, I tell you, it's a, it's a, I got to get to it. And I'm watching the clock. You cannot experience the excellence and victory if you don't connect your faith with pleasing God. You've got to walk with God, and walking with God means that you're going to connect your faith, your belief in God with pleasing God. So, well, Brother Frazier, you know, uh, uh, what does that do to my mindset? Well, what it does to your mindset is that you put pleasing God in front of everything. You put pleasing God in front of everything. So what do you mean by that? Well, when I learn the principles of God, okay, here's, here's one. This is, okay, I, I know you're going to get this one because uh, I don't think anybody in here wants to do this. You know, we, we get stuff we don't want to do. It's the stuff that we don't, the stuff that we want to do, that's what we have trouble with. Okay, so, so Ephesians chapter 4 and I believe verse uh, 29 says, Let him that stole steal no more, but let him work with his hands the things that is good that he may have to help those who are in need. Okay, so, so now it's, it's some parts to this. Yeah. Let him that stole steal no more. Now that's one part. Okay, let him work with his hands the things that is good. Now, you know, that's just two challenges. Okay, let him that stole steal no more. I don't steal, but let him work with his hands the things that are not that working part. Now, I don't steal, okay, but that working part, that's a challenge for me. Okay, work with his hands the things that is good. Now, that's a lot of work around here that makes a lot of money. But the question is, is it good? Are y'all with me? That, okay, here's another part <laughs> that you may have. Now, I got that. I want to work. Okay, I want to do some good work, get paid work so I can have. Oh, I like that. I want to have. Don't want to be without. But the next part is to have to help those who are 
in need. No, no, okay, now. Nah. To help those who are in need, now nah, I might, that might give me a little problem. Because, because now I've got to deal with working, me working, and they being in need. Now, are they working? Why should I work and help those that are not working? And because they're not working, they're in need. Are y'all with me? So, so, so now, how, how do I walk by faith? Okay, now, everything that I got a problem with, I've got to put out in the front, pleasing God. Who am I going to please? God or myself? Okay. Now, now, listen, don't let this fly over your head. Because we'll please ourselves in a minute. I don't like that. I don't like that. You know, that, that, you know, that him that stole still no more. I can handle that. I ain't going to take nothing from nobody because I don't want nobody taking nothing from me. Okay. The la last week, we got off Bible class. I don't know which day it was. It's been Wednesday. So we got off Bible class. I looked out the window and uh, had a bunch of groceries on my porch. Where did these groceries come from? I got a neighbor uh, down, down the way. He brings snacks. He works for... Uh, he, he works for these uh, pastries, this pastry delivery, and he brings snacks. He drops a lot of snacks. He put, puts them on the porch in bags and so forth. Take them to the grandchildren. Had a bunch of bags on my porch. Now I open the door and I look at had bags, soda, all kind of gross. Had meat, everything. And then I said, it's somebody's groceries. They delivered these groceries to the wrong house. And much as I hated to, I load them groceries up. In my car, I took him to Walmart. Called Walmart. The guy says, "You know, Brother Ray, you it's a that's a blessing from the Lord." I said, "No, it's a blessing for me, because if I order something and my stuff don't come, I'm gonna be upset. So somebody somewhere is upset because they didn't get their groceries. So y'all take these groceries back. Plus, I didn't want them no way. Are y'all with me? So, so." Let him that stole steal no more. You have your own personal principles that you don't have a problem with. But then if you got a problem with working, okay, now I got a problem. Work? Work? Well, I don't want to work. Yeah, you have to. But it's, 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 some individuals don't want to work. Work with your hands the things that are good that you might have. I don't want to do all of that. Now, how do I get over that? I've got to look at, okay, what do you want to do, Fraser? You want to please yourself or you want to please God? I'm trying to give you a key, okay? I'm just to show you something. There's something else in the text. I'm trying to give you a key now. You don't, have to, you don't need a breakthrough. Here's the key. You've got to decide if I'm going to please God or please myself. we got a ministry here at the church. we got a ministry at the church that needs the support and the help of everybody. I got something to do. Oh, well, wait a minute. Well, hold, hold up. Before you decide, you got to ask yourself, what am I going to please? Am I going to please God? Or am I going to please myself? This is real, church. This is really real. You can, you can think of all the excuses. That, uh, you can think of all of the comments that you want. Well, I ain't got to go down there. Uh, when you say you go down there in order to serve God, I can serve God anyway. You ever heard folk talk like that? I mean, they didn't, they weren't animated like that. I just did that because I wanted to make sure y'all was listening to me. Okay. You see, when, whenever we don't want to do something, we'll come up with an argument. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Show me in the Bible it says that. You ever heard that? So, so we should be asking ourselves, who do I want to please? 
Do I want to please God or do I want to please myself? And it comes down to our getting along with each other. We have different temperaments. Everybody does not have your temperament. Everybody's not going to respond to uh, something the way you do. Some of us are more animated. Some of us are more subdued. Some of us will say, and some, it's just like on Bible class. I want to go go ahead, answer the question and so forth. And I try not to press too hard because I know that some of you don't want to say anything. I, I told you this. I, as a member of the church, back in, in, in Mississippi, said, Brother Frazier, I'm coming to Bible class. We have Bible class on, on, t, uh, on uh, Wednesday morning. I'm coming to Bible class, but don't call on me. If you call on me, I don't want to read. I, I just want to be in Bible class. If you call on me, I'm not coming no more. And I, I, said, I said, okay. And they came to Bible class, came to Bible class, and I never called on them. But they continued to come to Bible class. And some individuals, just, they just have different temperaments. But because someone doesn't have the same temperament as you have, some of us don't have the same qualities. Some of us have been brought up different. I, I've been, I'm not, you know, I'm, 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 uh, if you, you go to an individual's house, everybody don't keep their house the same way. Are y'all with me? Because we were brought up different. So, so because you see something different in someone else, it does not mean that you, you can't deal with them. Maybe them being around you will help them develop some of your qualities, your good qualities. Are y'all with me? So, so what helps you to think like that is, well, who do I want to please? Do I want to please myself? Or do I want to please God? When it comes down to, to dealing with order, do I want to please God or do I want to please myself? When it comes down to the church, the church has, because we are a group, we have to function in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. So when it comes down to us following a certain pattern, everybody can't do what they want to do in a group. There are some individuals that have abilities that others don't have. Yeah, I'm, I'm on. Uh, I don't. I've never dropped a transmission before in my life. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna fix your transmission for you. Well, brother Fraser, uh, 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 you got any tools? Yeah, I got my bike grips. That's the. That's the only tool I need. And I'm gonna drop your transmission. Are y'all with me? You know that I'm not equipped. To do that job. Now the, now the question is, why would I press the issue knowing that I'm not equipped to do the job? Is that pleasing God? That's what we got to ask ourselves. Are you, am I pleasing myself or am I pleasing God? If I'm pleasing God, then I want the best for God. But I just want to do it. Why are you pleasing yourself or are you pleasing God? Do you want God to have the best? If you want God to have the best, then you promote the best for God. If Brother Ron can do something better than me, or just because, just because I'm not... I'm the preacher. I'm not supposed to have, be able to have to do everything. Are y'all with me? If Brother Ron can do it and he can do the best job in it, guess what I want? I want God to get the glory. So I'm going to let Brother Ron do it. Are y'all with me? And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to assist Brother Ron. Brother Ron, what can I do to help? 
I ain't going to look at Brother Ron. Well, you got it. You, you act like you know everything. I'm just going to leave you with it. And you've never seen people act like that? They get all salty because somebody can do something that they're not doing, and they just leave, and they won't even help. But when you want to please God, when you want God to be glorified, guess what you're going to do? You're going to get in your lane, and you're going to stay in your lane. Are y'all with me? You're going to get there and stay there. That's right. And a lot of times in the church, we promote ourselves rather than pleasing God. Now, when we do that, when we do that, here's the other part of the text. This, this is the part. It says, now, now here, here, here's the part. It says, without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Now, that's the part that we normally preach. You got to believe that God is. Okay, now, that's true. You cannot uh, become a Christian and not believe that God exists. Okay, this last phrase here. This is, this is our phrase. This is our key, okay? Now, I must believe that he is, and I believe everybody in here believes that he is. I don't believe that you would be here right now if you did not believe that he is, okay? But this last phrase, this, this, this is the one that, that you need to be carrying with you, okay, along with that one. He says, and, and means in addition to believing that he is, you also believe that he is a rewarder. Rewarder. Who wants to go to work tomorrow? Work eight hours and then get zero pay. Oh, yeah, you know, you work eight hours and, and I might pay you. Oh, yeah. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to get to Friday and, and, uh, and they say, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I, I could pay you, but I got something to do. I said that would be a terrible for you for you to work eight hours, five days a week, forty hours, and get absolutely nothing. Who wants to go to Kroger's? Find a box of cereal on sale. Oh, man, you got Frosted Flakes, big family size, on sale for 59 cents. 59 cents. Man, you get two of those boxes and pay cash for them. You don't even put them on your card. Paying cash today. Are y'all with me? Get them home and nothing's in the box. Ooh, man. Who wants to do that? Who wants to get nothing? Are y'all with me? I'm not coming. I'm not coming in here to get nothing. I'm not coming every Sunday for nothing. Are y'all with me? I'm not serving for nothing. I want something. And he says he is a rewarder of them. What them? Thought them that will walk, excuse my grandma, them that will walk with me. Them that will please me. Them that has the kind of faith that will say, am I going to please God or please myself? Those are the ones that I'll reward. See, we live in a world where individuals want rewards for nothing. Yeah, I want to Man, I want to put $10 in the bank today and go back tomorrow and get me $100 out of the bank. Are y'all with me? Man, I've been looking for a bank like that for a long time. 
Anybody know of a bank that does that? No, y'all looking too, aren't you? <laughs> y'all looking for a bank like that too. That's right, because we want, we, want the, we want the maximum for the minimum. We want something for nothing. Are y'all with me? And we've got to stop being like that. Because God doesn't deal with us on those bases. You can't live any way you want and expect God to give you the maximum of his blessings. You can't please yourself and, 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 and cater to yourself and, and think in, uh, uh, creatively and, and have ingenuity for yourself. But you have no creativity and ingenuity for God. Yeah, you cannot have order for your life and have no order in the church. You can't understand that folk got to follow you and do what you have, do what you say, but you don't want to follow God and do what he says. Doesn't work like that. He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He rewards you. Now I don't I don't want to get into I don't, I don't want to get into how God rewards you. All I know is this that God can do exceeding abundantly. Uh <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I grew up listening to God to give you your needs and not your wants. Are y'all with me? But when I study my Bible, I understand that God can do exceedingly abundantly. The children of Israel were enslaved for 400 plus years. And when the tabernacle got ready to be built, Moses had to restrain. Israel from giving. Why? Because God sent them out of Egypt with so much, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Children of Israel were in 70 years of captivity in the book of Ezra when God brought them out of captivity. They had everything and more than what they needed in order to worship God. God is able to give us, listen, listen, we, li, listen, listen, listen to this. We use terminology like give to the church. Give to the church. God blessed Israel with what they needed in order to worship him. So when the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 2, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered you. God prospers you to worship him, not just give to, let me see what I got for God today. Uh-uh. No. You come. You come with a gift. You come with again. All, all y'all know about birthday parties. Right. And Matthew, he's going to have a birthday party. Matthew's having a birthday party. And so we love Matthew. Ain't nobody got to tell you to bring a gift to Matthew's birthday party. You love Matthew? But now if you don't like Matthew, oh, you going to Matthew's birthday party? Ah, I don't know. Right. Come on and go. It'll be fun. Okay. And you walk in, no birthday present. Why you ain't bring no birthday present? Because you didn't want to be there in the first place. You ain't care nothing about Matthew's birthday. Huh? You did what you wanted to do. You pleased yourself. Are y'all with me? They always asking for money. But when you go to the birthday party, you don't hear nobody complain about every year Matthew want this and he want that. You know, nobody's talking that. Everybody puts their birthday present down in the designated place and go on and have a good time. 
Is, is that what y'all experience? When we were coming up, and I, you know, little children, and we, uh, uh, our parents gave us birthday presents to, to take to our little friend. You put the birthday present, you all playing. You ain't talking about no birthday, but you, what you get him? When you come in to please God, you come ready to please him. It's no question that you're going to bring a gift. It's no question that you're going to bow at his feet. Oh, you yeah, come to yeah. How long is he going to preach today? Are y'all with me? But when you come in to please him, you want to hear everything about him are y'all with me man every time we get into a setting and things are not accustomed to the way we feel we go to looking around trying to see if anybody got that sour face that we feel in are y'all with me but when you come to worship, when you come to Bible class, because you want to please him, you're ready to absorb. And, and, and I believe, church, the reason why it's so hard for us to get together and do the great things that we do is because we are so caught up on pleasing ourselves rather than pleasing him, and we're claiming that we have faith. But God has told us, here's the key to new self-excellence. God says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. It's possible, church, from the pulpit to the back door, that we've been claiming to have faith and failing to please God. Man, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you this morning thanking you for Jesus, thanking you for him being our intercessor. We can come before your throne because of Jesus. Thank you for his sacrifice. You gave him to us when we didn't deserve it. And we cannot thank you and praise you enough for him. Thank you for your word. Lord, look into everybody's heart this morning. And Father, in any area in which we are trying to please ourselves over you, please forgive us. Give us time. Give us strength to walk every day of our lives demonstrating our faith by striving to please you. Help us to see pleasing you over people, over things, over world conditions. Help us to see it because, Lord, we know that if we please you, you are the rewarder of them that diligently seek. You can do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Lord, we know you're able. Whatever problems is going on in this world, you can lift us above. You can uh, create in us a light that shines through you that everybody can see. We can be your instruments. And we'll just focus our minds on pleasing you. Lord, there are sins that we want to overcome. There are, there are problems that we have that we need solutions for. Father, help us to just focus on pleasing you. If we walk with you and focus our time and our energy and our resources on pleasing you, we know you'll deliver us from all those issues that we need to be delivered from. We know you're able. We beg, we plead with you to please touch us, please heal us, please give us peace, give us strength, Shower us with your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you're here this morning and you have not been pleasing him, Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and all the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You've got to come to the Lord. You've got to confess. He'll forgive you, but you've got to confess. 
Bible teaches us when we're Christians, we ought to confess our sins one to another and pray that we might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. This is your opportunity to confess your sins. And if you're not a Christian, this is a perfect time for you to become a Christian. Amen. Believe that Jesus died for your sins. Believe he was buried. Believe he rose again the third day. Believe the blood he shed at Calvary. Purchased the church of God, the church of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Acts 20 and 28, Mark 16, 15 and 16. Repent. Make up in your mind that God is right about everything. You can't change anything in your life without believing that God is right about everything. His word is sure. His word is true. His word is pure. We must believe every word of it. Even when we're not what we ought to be, we can't change into being what God wants us to be until we believe he's right about everything. And then confess Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God, Acts 8, 37. We'll baptize you. And in baptism, all your sins will be washed away. I know that individuals teach different things. But when we stand before God, we're going to be judged by the word of God. And on the day of Pentecost, the question was asked, men and brethren, what shall we do? And the Holy Spirit guided Peter to reply, in Acts 2 and verse 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Lord will add you to his church, Acts 2 and verse 47, he'll add you to the church of Christ. Romans chapter 16 and verse 16. If there's anyone's desire, we beg you to please come as we stand and sing. All day long, Jesus, I am singing. He, my song of joy will ever be. All the while, he keeps my heart bells ringing. For his love is everything to me. I know that he is my king. I know that he's my savior, he's my king. Oh, streams of love around my soul are flowing from his heart. Love's everlasting spring, oh, that is why my faith in him I'm showing that is why an endless song I I know that he's my king and oh I dearly love him oh he's my king no other is above him all day long in raptured praise I sing I know church um thank you brother frazier for that message i'm asking for prayers for my husband james he has a procedure on um on a tuesday so keep us in prayer please that um that the results of the tests are unfavorable um, yes this is sister wise and i'm still asking for you all to continue to pray for my grandson he is improving so please keep praying for him because He's such a good young man, not because he's my grandson. He's really a good young man. Thank you. Amen, amen. Oh, good morning. <clears throat> good morning, brothers and sisters. I stand asking prayers for my mom. She will be having surgery on tomorrow, so I pray that all goes well with her. I'm asking the church to 
keep on praying for me. And I will tell you, I have a funeral in California. It's the bar of my niece. Y'all pray for her. Oh, pray for them, brother. And I want to be back, back tied at this church as soon as, as soon as possible, okay? All righty. Come on down. As we get ready for uh, our dear sister, well, soon to be, uh, let us get uh, Brother Frazier is going to do what he got to do right now, and then we're going to lift up prayer right quick, and then we'll get into the baptism. Amen, amen. We thank God for, for Miss Christina coming for, would you mind repeating after me? I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. Amen. That confession that you just made brought death to Christ. And when you go down in the watery grave of baptism, all your sins before God, whether they whether they were by word, thought, or deed, will be washed away. And the Lord will add you to His church. He will add you to the Church of Christ. You'll be a member of the Church of Christ, the only church that you can read about in the New Testament. We're going to be judged by the New Testament. And when you stand before God, you'll stand before him as a member of the Church of Christ. Be faithful until you die. The Bible says if you, uh, he will give you a crown of life if you're faithful unto death. Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 10. And we're going to ask you, uh, Miss Christine, to go right there with uh, Sister Tamika standing, and we're going to prepare you for baptism. God bless you. Amen. While we're getting ready for the baptism, uh, let us go to God in uh, prayer and remember those prayers that were uh, were requested. Shall we together bow? Dear most gracious Father, we approach your throne. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Thank you for this moment, Heavenly Father, by which you've given us, Heavenly Father. And we know, Heavenly Father, that it's by you, Heavenly Father, because if we had to pay for this moment, we wouldn't have it the way that we've had it, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you're doing for us, all of your 